Money FM 89.3, best of prime time. Market View on Money FM 89.3. We're going to take a closer look once again at Chinese markets, and there seems to be just a little bit more calm as compared to the last couple of weeks. However, earlier this Thursday morning, we did get word that Chinese regulators have once again taken some of the ride-sharing companies in China to task. And the question now is, will some of these regulatory uncertainties mean for markets across the world? Today on Money FM 89.3, we're joined once again by Mr. Peter Chen, the founder of Silver Bear Capital in Hong Kong. He's been keeping close tabs of all the developments with regards to these uncertainties in greater Chinese markets. He joins us today to talk about them. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to hear you and your loved ones are still safe and in good health during these times. And welcome back to the show, sir. Happy Thursday and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. There are signs of slowing growth in China also based on those PMI figures that we saw the other day. Some of these regulatory concerns that have been brought to the fore really hitting a number of sectors and industries out in China. But Chinese markets seem to have improved and stabilized a little bit in recent days. In your opinion, do you think the worst is over from the recent sell off? Well, I mean, the. We have all have um, witnessed the uh, the the market um, going down uh, mostly because of the tech stock. But again, if you we looked at the uh, graphs, so tech stock has rebounded by 15% from their August 20 low as valuation begins to appeal to fund managers who recently think you know things will turn bearish, which is good. So I think um, everybody is out and hunting on the market, and everybody is kind of relooking at their portfolio and trying to find tech stocks that has the real probability in, in the company or uh, at least substance that would carry that tech stock forward rather than being seen as a demand on the street. But you know that tech stock has to have some uh, meaningful substance to face the challenge coming up in the market. Personally, Peter, would you consider yourself one of those bargain hunters or are you still staying on the sidelines? Well, I think we will probably wait for a few more days, maybe um, after the U.S. Uh, holidays next week, and then uh, we can basically we looked at the market again. So uh, for the time being, most of the guys right now just came back from holidays. So uh, it's our usual uh, tactic to kind of wait until the holidays are over. Fair enough. Now, as we know with these these uh, regulatory moves that China has been making, um, Beijing has argued that they are necessary to rein in excess and also try and rein in some of these abusive risks like monopolistic practices, negative social morals. But what might this do to long-term valuations for some of these stocks? How, is this going to raise serious questions about long-term valuations for these Chinese companies? Probably not, because I think what the government in China are are really concerned is about basically i mean if you take a look at the uh, the berry news um back to say china suspended the 34 billion ipo of n group uh, which is the largest online payment platform in china which grew up inside the baba now this is an act of the government whereby they have started to be concerned about um how much control um that they needed to put in these private tech companies that are overwhelming China economy, but China government have actually very little, say, warning from these private companies before these private companies were to announce or do certain things that would have a big ripple effect in the Chinese economy. So therefore, I think China is trying to recraft how they manage these super large tech companies private or maybe meaningful inference, inferential companies who has a very big balance sheet that has a very big social economy impact if they're not being operated correctly. So I think they're trying to play it nicely by slowing everything down a little bit and recraft what's available on, the, on, on their government plate in order to say not control these companies, but at least to leash them so that there is a synergy communication between the government and these large private companies in order for, for the economy to to not be surprised by a sudden change. Obviously. All right, we'll soon be here to Peter Chun, the founder of Silverberg Capital here on Money FM 89.3, taking stock of some of the new risks coming out of China. One of the bigger risks though, from China's attempts, Peter, 
to rein in and perhaps reform the VIE corporate model. That's a variable interest entity that so many firms relied on over the last few decades for international expansion. If this is revamped by Chinese regulators, could it fundamentally affect markets even more seriously than the current regulatory issues? Well, there will, there will be impact for sure. I mean, um, the variable interest entity, VIE structure, as we call it, almost every listed Chinese company we can buy outside of China is listed through a VIE structure. Through mm-hmm. this structure, investors usually and literally don't actually own any part of the actual underlying Chinese company. While that might sound ridiculous, but sadly it's true. So investors who buy shares in Chinese stocks, like just as JD.com, Alibaba, Tencent, etc., do not technically have any ownership of the underlying business whatsoever. So having said that, so I'm sure the reform of, of this structure would mean a better uh, grip for investors who actually wanted to invest into these Chinese companies later on, because now you, have, you can invest through a different structure, meaning that the actual investors uh, of this company can actually own maybe part of this company um, truly, then this changes the game a little bit as well. So I think this is the fundamental difference um, uh, of revamping, say, the existing VIE or maybe into the new structure. Of course, me and you won't know what the new, new structure is, but this is what's going on with the old structure that we have. But the funny thing is, I would like to point out, is a lot of the market people do enact kind of look into this VIE problem for many years. So actually, have you have seen uh, stock have performed very well, investors have no concern about the VIE structure, and everybody seems to be okay until now. We can go through a laundry list of risks coming from China right now, especially some of these regulatory issues, the VIE corporate structure, the attempts to reform various sectors from tech to a property, for instance. But ultimately, what kind of impact will these Chinese risks have on the region? Or will this be mostly contained to greater Chinese markets, Peter? What are your thoughts, given the fact that well, right now I'm sitting in Singapore thinking, should I worry about some of these risks coming out of uh, mainland China? From our point of view, I think the VIE structure is something to be looked at. But I think um, uh, from the beginning, I think in between US and China and the rest of the world looking into these giant Chinese stocks, I think what needs to be looked at is the integrity of the accounting. Because before, uh, you've seen high-profile deals like Looking Coffee, which is basically the stop of China, turn into something that people didn't expect it. And these are sadly because the the accounting were not being looked at uh, on the same benchmark as the rest of the world. Improving that uh, integrity policy would actually improve the quality of the Chinese stocks coming out from China and therefore meaning a better future for Chinese stocks upcoming years because now Chinese companies will have a better standing on accounting, we can see a better transparency in, in the disclosures, and um, it means that actually uh, the chances of some bad things happening have been reduced. So in the long run, I think it's better. Peter, finally, I do want to revisit China Evergrande, the property developer that's also been highlighted as a potential uh, risk for markets there. Um, we did see their report card, their, their results recently, where they showed profits fall by about 29%. More telling, though, is that mountain of 300 billion US dollars worth of liabilities. Can Evergrande indeed get ahead of the risks? And if so, how much smaller could the firm turn into if they're able to pare down this mountain of debt, albeit at the risk of perhaps significant asset sales? Well, I think the asset sales has to has to continue, but uh, whether they're they're able to actually overcome uh, their debt to ratio situation is yet to be um, reviewed. And obviously, because um, their attempt in going to the uh, electric vehicle earlier on had mm-hmm. meant something to the investors on the market, and seeing that um, there is a big market coming up with uh, EV not just the rest of the world, I'm just sure just China alone has has a big market already. So um, whether they're going to really just base on their old business model to overcome the debt or that they have something else to hedge against um, the situation is purely to be uh, speculated um, um, by by the streets. I personally think um, that, that there is some way for them to still to to go um, in order for for them to come up with maybe a, a proper plan 
to 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 balance that that debt. It's just quite a huge amount, unless they will be able to figure out that there is some sort of a merger or maybe consolidation um, of the same businesses in China, allowing them to 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 enjoy economy of scale a little bit, so that they can actually. Um, uh, play down that debt by 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 the M and A um, uh, scenario. So these are the things that we are seeing. Uh, we don't think any international uh, uh, market will assist uh, this company for the time being because they're not as active uh, outside China mm-hmm. compared to the others. And um, so I would think, you know, um, they, they will probably the management would probably have to look at M and A consolidation or maybe um, uh, maybe a side discipline just like EV to to overcome the the situation. Peter Chun, founder of Silver Bear Capital, thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to join us on Money FM eighty nine point three to talk about the recent uh, regulatory risks, uh, potential regulatory risks that are coming out of mainland China, its impact on markets. As always, I wish you and your loved ones continued health and safety during these times. We look forward to next time we can have you on the show. Meanwhile, have a good afternoon, sir. Thank you. Before acting on the information on Money FM, please consider if it's suitable for your own investment objectives, financial situation, and risk tolerance. To listen to more great interviews, download our podcasts at moneyfm893.sg or download our audio app. That's A-W-E-D-I-O. Available on Google Play or the App Store.